Welcome to the On Target HTML5 website YouTube channel. On Target HTML5 is dedicated to teaching web development technologies in HTML5, HTML, CSS, CSS3, PHP, MySQL, Flash, and the XML scripting language. We'll also be adding a JavaScript section to the website over the next few months. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Welcome to the Flash Essential Training Series. I'm Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, we are going to talk about an introduction to ActionScript 3. ActionScript 3 is a big leap forward for the ActionScript programming language. ActionScript is an object-oriented programming language that's used to power the Flash player. Using ActionScript gives you much more power and flexibility in how you interact with your Flash movies. ActionScript is fully compliant with ECMA standards and in fact is the first version of ActionScript that is ECMA compliant. And when I say ActionScript, I mean ActionScript 3 is fully compliant with ECMA standards. With these improvements in the programming language comes an increase in the complexity of the language itself. This complexity will require a little more persistence on your part in order to gain a good grasp of the new programming language, but trust me, it'll be worth it. Throughout these tutorials on Flash and ActionScript fundamentals, we'll be building on your knowledge in a step-by-step -step manner. I will make my best effort to explain everything clearly and give many examples. As we work through the exercises, follow along. Pause the player and complete the actions that I'm demonstrating. It will make your learning process more enjoyable and much more rewarding. If you have any questions or comments on anything we discuss in any of the tutorials, feel free to contact me through the website and I'll be more than happy to try and address your questions and concerns. If you'd like to see additional information in the tutorial or have any ideas for future tutorials, just let me know and I'll do my best to schedule those updates or changes or new tutorials into the workflow. There are links to contact me placed throughout the website. Don't hesitate to contact me if you have a question, a comment, or you just want to ask about a different type of tutorial. ActionScript 3 is the newest version of the ActionScript programming language. It is recognized by Flash Player 9 and higher. Authoring in ActionScript 3 can be accomplished in the Adobe Flex Builder 2 and higher application, the Flex Builder SDK, and of course, Flash CS. Throughout these tutorials, I'll be authoring in Flash CS Professional while working through the demonstrations. I'm currently using version 5.5. You will notice that many tutorials are different than tutorials you've completed in the past. I plan to new to add new instruction methods to these tutorials as we move forward. As a professional educator in adult education, I will use the best practices methodology in my delivery. We'll begin most lessons with a few minute presentation on what I plan to accomplish in the lesson, and then we'll dive into the software to go through the lessons and demonstrations. Your feedback on this approach would be much appreciated as I am constantly, constantly looking to improve my delivery methodology in adult education. So what's new in ActionScript 3? First off, we have enhanced packages. ActionScript 3 classes are organized into packages. Packages are folders that hold similar ActionScript class files. In ActionScript 2, we had some limited use of packages, but in ActionScript 3, they're much more prevalent. We also have document class. Flash CS has introduced document classes. In previous versions of Flash and ActionScript, the main timeline was always a movie clip symbol. With Flash CS, you can create your own custom class for the main timeline. ActionScript tools. Flash CS has many new tools in the Actions panel that assist you in writing and organizing your code much more efficiently. There are numerous new features that speed application development, and we'll cover many of these in this set of tutorials. Scripting improvements. Flash CS has a brand new debugging feature that is a much improved interface. This is much more flexible and is consistent with Adobe Flex 2 debugger. Plus language consistency. ActionScript 3 has improved upon the consistency of the language throughout the scripting environment. The syntax is much more consistent and thus much once core concepts are acquired, it's much easier to build upon them. You're also going to see that the language is very consistent with other programming language. As we've moved into ActionScript 3, it's much more consistent with other programming languages such as PHP, Java, C++. So as you learn one and you get familiar with one, you're going to find that a lot of that knowledge will port to other programming languages. 
And there are many areas of ActionScript that have improved over the years. As we work our way through the tutorials, I'll point these out to you as we get into those areas. Because Flash, or I'm sorry, Adobe Flash, used to be Macromedia Flash, but Flash has really come a long way since the early days of Flash. And I mean, there's been a lot of improvements, not only in the language consistency, but just in the way that Flash interacts with web development. And as we get to those portions of the tutorials, I'll point out to you some of the new and improved ways that we can do things in Flash. So let's look at the basics of ActionScript 3. The first group of tutorials will cover basic concepts of programming. We'll be discussing variables, functions, events, classes, conditional statements, and loops. To make certain we're all starting from the same point, what I want to do now for the next few minutes is I'm going to review those fundamentals of programming so that everybody's got a course of knowledge so that when they hear variable or loop or function, they'll know what I'm talking about. So let's look at some core concepts of programming before we actually move into developing in Flash. The first thing I want to talk about is variables. Variables are containers that hold data. So you'll see a typical variable string in ActionScript on your screen. I have var, which is a keyword. All variables in ActionScript, by using the var keyword, they all begin that way, followed by the name of the variable. This is different from previous versions of Flash or ActionScript, where the var keyword was optional. It's no longer optional. Like most programming languages, you must declare that this is a variable by using that var keyword. My var, this is the name that I've given this particular variable. This can be any word or string of letters and numbers beginning with either a letter or underscore. By convention, I recommend naming your variables using descriptive words in camel case. And you'll understand what I mean by camel case as we start getting into programming. But a good example is right here. I start with a lowercase and with each new word, I begin it with an uppercase letter. So my starts with a lowercase and then var should be a capital V, lower A, lower R. You'll notice I've got a camel case up here in our demonstration. Then the string. This is a data type. This defines the data type or the type of information that the variable can hold. The word string could be replaced with any class or interface name. And you'll see that we have many, many different types of variable types inside ActionScript, as in most programming languages. We have integers, numbers, booleans, strings, but we're going to go through all of those as we go through the tutorials. And we'll have a couple different tutorials just on data types in future lessons. But be aware, there are numerous types of data types that are available in ActionScript 3. And then Mike. This statement sets the value of the MyVar variable to the word Mike using the assignment, which is the equal sign. That's the assignment operator. The quotes around the word Mike signify that this is text rather, rather than a variable called Mike. So by enclosing that in quotation marks, I'm telling my variable that this is actually a text string and not another variable. And again, you'll understand much more about this as we start working through the tutorials, but I wanted you to understand what a variable is. So let's move into our development environment and work through an exercise on variables in ActionScript. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize my presentation and drop into our development environment. This is the development environment for on target HTML5 in case you have not seen this before. I'm going to go ahead and load in Flash. And you'll notice I have on my Flash screen, I have two timelines. I've got one that's named Labels and one that's named Actions. I always put my actions on their own separate layer, and that's where we actually put our action script, as you'll learn as we go through these tutorials. All I've done for the labels is I've given each label 10 frames with a keyframe on 1, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And again, if you don't understand exactly what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. We're going to go through all this as we go through these next tutorials. I just want to give you some demonstrations on what we talked about with variables. I want to do a save as here, by the way, because this is going to be your flash underscore 100 underscore 1 file that we're actually going to be working with here. Now, what I do want you to realize is I've got some actions on this particular layer. By the way, if you're curious how I name these layers, I just selected layer one, opened up the properties panel, I gave it a var. Label 10, I gave function. Label 20, I gave conditionals. And label 30, I gave loops. And you will see this as we go through our tutorials. I do a lot of naming with labels as I move around for animation and things. So you'll see that as we go through again. If you don't understand everything that I just talked about, don't worry about it. We're going to go through all this stuff. I just want to demonstrate how we use some variables inside of ActionScript 3. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select frame one of that actions layer, and I want to go ahead and open up my actions panel. 
That's F9 in the window, Option F9 for Macintosh. And you'll see here that all I've got is a stop. Let me go ahead and save this change for frame one. I'm stopping on frame one and I've got two sets of actions set up in my actions panel for variables. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and uncomment out this first variable demonstration. And we can do that by just highlighting it. You'll notice I've got comments. That's the forward slash star. That actually comments out a line of code so it's ignored. And I just go right there and I can actually remove those comments. So what I've done in this particular demonstration, just as we discussed in the presentation, I've declared a variable called my var. I've data typed it as a string. I have gave it a value of Mike. Remember, we use that assignment operator to give it a value of Mike. And then all I'm doing here with the trace statement is I'm tracing it to my output panel so that you can see that my my var variable now actually contains the value Mike. So to test that in Flash, I can actually test the movie by using Control Enter in Windows or Command Return on the Mac, and that will run that movie. And you'll see that we actually have that Mike variable inside of our output panel. Let me go ahead and close this based on how we had set up our actions. So again, we're just tracing the variable, the value of that variable. Let me go ahead and pull this out over here. We're tracing the value of that variable to our output panel when I do Control Enter on the PC or Command Return on the Mac. You'll see that we actually have Mike now in the output panel. And that's basically all we do for a variable. We actually take a variable, we give it an assignment. I can make this variable anything I want. If I wanted to make this Thomas, I can save that change. Again, control enter on the PC, command return on the Mac, and now the value of my var is Thomas. So I can change that value to anything I want based on how I want to use that variable. I'm going to go ahead and comment this back out because I want to drop back into our presentation because I want to talk a little bit about constant variables in ActionScript. All right, so I'm back inside of our presentation. Let's talk about constant variables because it's a different type of variable that's now available in ActionScript 3. Constant variables, ActionScript 3 introduces a special kind of variable called a constant. Constant variables define a value that do not change during the course of program execution. This is a great feature for values that either never change or that you want to protect from change inside your programs. We declare a constant variable in the following way. So I use my constant instead of var. I give the variable a name. Then I set the data type, just as we've done before. And then I give it a value. In this case, I've got a constant variable called boiling point. I've data typed it as an integer. And keep in mind, remember that colon. That's very important. That's what signifies our data type. Then I've given an assignment of 212 degrees. So the boiling point of water, 212, 212 degrees. And then I end that with a semicolon. So let's drop into the development environment. And I'll demonstrate that in our variables presentation inside of our development environment. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of the presentation, go back into the development environment. Let's go ahead and bring back Flash. And you'll notice now I've got this constant. Let's go ahead and remove those comments, or those rem statements, from our constant variable. And I've, I've declared a constant variable with a name of tax. I've data typed it as a number, and I've given it equal 0 0.05. So what I'm actually telling it, now this constant value, or this constant variable tax, is going to have a value of 0 0.05. And then right below there, what I've done is I've traced it by taking 100, and I've multiplied it by the value of tax. And that star symbol is multiplication symbol in programming, ActionScript 3, and actually in most programming languages. So when I test this movie using Control Enter in Windows or Command Return in the Mac, you'll see that in my output panel, I'm seeing the value of 5. Because if I take 100 and I multiply by 0 0.05, it equals 5. And that's what I'm tracing out is the sum or the execution of that particular variable. So I'm using that constant variable of tax and multiplying it by 100. And I could make this constant variable, let's say I want to make it 10 or 15, point 15. Let's go ahead and save that change. And again, when I test the movie, you notice now my value is 15. So again, we use constant values inside of ActionScript and actually inside of a lot of programming languages languages to store values and variables that are not going to be changed by the program. And normally we'll put these at the very beginning of the programming code. We'll set up our constant variables. For instance, if I was writing a shopping cart program or if I was writing some type of 
accounting program, I could give constants like my tax rate, my state tax rate, a constant variable for my federal tax rate, a constant variable for my employee social security percentages, and stuff like that. Those would be constant variables that are very seldom going to be changed, and we would not want the program to have access to changing those. So I hope that helps explain constant variables. And again, we will have tutorials on all of these as we work through the exercises. I just want to get you thinking like a programmer. I'm going to go ahead and comment this back out because we're going to drop back into our presentation. And the next thing I want to talk about is we want to talk about some things having to do with functions. All right, so let's talk about now, let's keep moving forward. Let's discuss functions in ActionScript 3. So functions in ActionScript 3, functions are reusable blocks of code, and you're going to see us use hundreds of functions throughout these tutorials. Functions are probably one of the most frequently used aspects of programming. At a basic level, they're pieces of code that have been stored as a saved routine that can be run at will by writing out the function's name or calling the function from inside of our program. Most all programs that are written rely heavily upon functions, especially when you're going to be doing things over and over again. Instead of rewriting that code over and over again, you generate that code into a function, and when you want to perform that particular calculation, you just call the function. A good example would be mathematical stuff. I could assign a function a variable number of variables and then just plug those numbers into the function and have them sum together or have them add together. So let's explain the syntax of how a function, how it works. You put the code that you want the function to perform inside of curly braces. So I've got my function, that's the keyword, the declaration that this is a function, the name I'm going to give the function, then a couple of arguments. In this particular case, it's an event and it's looking for a mouse event. And we'll talk about what this void means in a minute. And then I enclose the code that I want to run inside those curly braces. So my function is the keyword. It's always required when defining a function, just as var is always required when defining a variable. The on click immediately after the function keyword is the name of the function that I've given it. This can be anything I want. This is the command that I'm going to use when I call or want to run that function from within inside my program. Then I've got a couple of arguments. Argument one is an object, and argument two is an object. Following the function name is the comma separated list of arguments inside a pair of parentheses. Each argument should be followed by a colon and the data type of the argument. And in this particular case, you'll see that I've got two objects. One is the event object and one is a mouse event object. They don't always have to be objects, as you'll see as we work through the tutorials. The colon void at the end, after the parentheses, are another colon and the data type for the value the function returns. This is the value that will be returned by the function when the function is completed executing. In this case, the return type is void because the function is not returning anything in a statement. We'll spend quite a bit of time talking about return types as we work through the tutorials, and we're going to spend a lot of time on functions. I just want you to understand when you hear the word function, what it is. All the code that's executed when the function is called is contained within the two curly braces. This code is, is known as the function body. So again, it's just important that you understand how it's laid out when we enter it into code. So let's move back into the development environment and we'll look at how a function is laid out inside of ActionScript. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of the presentation to get back into our development environment. Let's get back into Flash. I want to go ahead and remove these comments. So I'm actually going to go to the function area of our code. Let's go ahead and save that. Do save as, because that's actually going to be our number three. And again, if you have access to the exercise files, you'll have all of these inside your exercise folder. Let's go ahead and close out that output panel. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And now I'm going to run my program, and it's going to actually work over to my function demonstration. But let's go ahead and select that actions layer and look at the function that we have in there. And again, we can't really demonstrate this because there's not a good way to demonstrate this at a basic level. So I just want you to see the fun or the syntax as to how a function works. So I've got my function keyword. Then I've got the name that I've given the function. And here I've got my two objects. Keep in mind, these don't have to be the objects inside of ActionScript. As you'll see as we work through the tutorials, these can be a variety of things. These can even be variables where we're passing in data to the function when we call it. And it's executing things as we call them. So I've got an event mouse event. Again, I'm not returning anything. 
So then I just go and tell it what I want it to do inside the curly braces. And in this particular case, I could have it do a whole lot of things. It doesn't have to be limited to one line. I actually have written functions inside of C and um, inside PHP that are hundreds of lines long. Not unusual. Action script, I think the longest function I've written in Action script is probably 60 or 70 lines. But it's not unusual to have very, very multiple lines of code inside these curly braces for our functions. And that's what a function looks like in Action Script. As we work through the tutorials, you're going to see me use a lot of those. You're going to actually demonstrate using a lot of those as you work through the exercises with me. So you'll have plenty of practice as to how functions work. I just wanted you to see what they look like inside of Action Script. All right, moving right along, let's talk about some conditional statements. Because conditional statements are very, very important in any programming language. So conditional statements in Action Script 3, what good would it be if your programs and functions always executed the same exact way every time that you ran them? Essentially, the element of choice over how to act under different circumstances would be lost inside of our programming. That's where conditional statements or decision-making points in our code come into play. Conditionals, such as the if statement, enable the code to evaluate the truth of a logical expression, which lets the program select different outcomes for different results. The most commonly used type of conditional is the if statement. An if statement allows you to execute a piece of code only if a certain condition is met. If this is true, then do that. If it's not true, then we can have it do something else. There are many different operators that can be used inside conditional statements. We have the less than, the greater than. Those double equal marks are the equal to, because remember, a single equal mark is an assignment operator, so we'd have to have a double equal if we want the two values to be equal. And the three equal marks, and you'll see equal symbols, and you'll see those used quite frequently, not only does the data have to be the same, but it has to be the same type. So in other words, if I had a value number two that's a numeric value or a number, and I had a number two that was inside of a text string, those would not be the same data type. So technically, if I used the triple equal signs, they would not be equal. And you'll see me demonstrate that as we go through our tutorials. We'll cover many of the most often used operators throughout the tutorial series. We also have the if else statements. And all that that is, an if else is an if it's this way, do this, else, do something else. By adding the else keyword, you can add an additional block of code to be executed only if the condition is not met. And you'll see a demonstration of that in our exercise. Then we also have this, what's called the switch statement, which is a multiple, it's a group of conditions. So if you need to test the condition of something against several different possible outcomes, as in one of the examples we're going to look at in a few minutes, we can actually use a, stick, a switch statement to do that. And it works very, very well. A switch statement is like a giant if-else statement that tests a single expression against several possible outcomes. And actually, it's much more efficient than multiple if-else. Because I mean, I could have if, if-else, 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 if-else. It's not very efficient. And something like that, we'd want to use a switch statement. You can check for any number of different cases or possible outcomes for the expression that you're going to evaluate, and even default a set of code if none of the outcomes match. So let's drop into the development environment and we'll work through a couple exercises using conditional statements in ActionScript. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of our presentation. Let's go back into our development environment. And let's time this time we're going to look at conditional. So I'm going to go ahead and select that actions layer. Let's go ahead and open up that actions panel. I'm going to go ahead and comment out these functions. And this time we're going to go into the conditional areas. Let's go ahead and save that change. And let's select the action script for the conditional so I can give you an idea of what we put in here. I'm going to go ahead and F9 to open up the actions panel. And I've got a bunch of different conditional statements. So let me go ahead and run this one out because that's not the demonstration we want to do this particular exercise. And let's scroll up here to the top of the screen. And the first condition we're going to look at is the if statement. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these comments, and you'll see here we've got a variable. All right, so what I have here is I've got a variable that I've given an assignment of A. I've, de I've data typed it as a number, it equals five. And then I set up an if statement, and I'm saying that if A is less than 10, so if that evaluates to true, 
I want you to trace A to my output panel. In other words, going to print it to the output panel, just like we did before, and then add one to A. And then I'm going to go back and trace this again. So if I test this movie with Control Enter in the PC or Command Return in the Mac, you'll see that we see our value of five where we traced A because it is less than 10, so it went into our statement. Then I added one to A, and then I traced that value, and that's why you're seeing the six inside the output panel. So that's how an if statement works. If I were to make this value, let's make it 15, and save that change, trace this to the output statement, you'll notice now that all we see is the value of 15 because A was not less than 10, so it didn't execute any of this code. It just went right to the end of the if statement. And I've got a couple other examples. Let's go ahead and put this in for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. Let's come down to my second example where I'm using an if else. We actually talked about if else is inside of our presentation. Let's go ahead and remove those comments. Now I have a variable called user, and I've data typed it with a string data type of Mike. And I said, if my user, remember we're using the double equal signs because this is not an assignment operator, it's a comparison operator. So I'm comparing the value of user to Jim. So I'm saying, if user is equal to Jim, then I want you to trace out the user is Jim. If it's not equal to Jim, I want you to trace out the user was, and then I'm getting the value of the user variable, whatever I put inside this value. So let's go ahead and test that conditional statement. And again, I'm going to do Control Enter in the PC, Command Return on the Mac. And you'll notice now we're saying it's telling us that the user is Mike or was Mike. If I were to change this to Jim and save that change, trace this one out again, let's go ahead and get rid of the movie, you'll see now the user is Jim in my output panel because now the value of the variable is Jim. So user is equal to Jim because the user is also Jim. And I'm saying the user is Jim. So that's how we use the if else statements. And we're, we're going to use a lot of these in the tutorial so you'll get much better at understanding how these work and actually setting them up. I just, again, I'm trying to get you familiar with the terminology inside of ActionScript and inside of programming in general. Now let's look at the switch statement that we talked about. Go ahead and remove the comments from that switch statement. Come down here, let's scroll up a little bit. Get rid of those comments. So now I've got a switch statement. So I've, get, I've assigned a variable B to the number seven. I've given the number seven to my variable B and I've data typed it as a number, just as we talked about when we're using these variables. Now I've got switch and I'm bringing in the value of that variable. And I'm saying if it matches any of these cases, and normally when I write my case statements, I actually indent these. So it makes it a little bit easier to read because this way you can see what the case or what the comparison is and then you can see what the code is underneath that comparison. So let's go ahead and indent those. Let's go ahead and save that change. So now that I'm looking at number seven, and does number seven equal one, two, three? so it doesn't equal any of those, so it's actually gonna to go to this default value. So let's go ahead and test that movie. Control Enter in the PC, Command Return on the Mac, and you'll see the value is not listed. If I were to make the value, for instance, five, save that change, control enter Windows command return to the Mac to test, you'll see now the conditional or the switch statement actually went down here to five and said, yep, it equals the number five and you can have many lines of code. So I've actually got two statements that are displayed in my output panel. And if I were to make the value one, save, test that movie, control enter on the PC, or yeah, control enter on the PC command return on the Mac, you'll see now all we get is the return of one. And we'll do a full tutorial on switch statements. Again, I just want you to understand there are a lot of different conditional statements inside of ActionScript. We use them to actually figure out what branches we want our code to take based on what the conditions are that are being met. And we use conditional statements quite a bit, quite frequently inside of ActionScript and actually inside of all of our programming languages. Now let's go back into our presentation. All right, so next thing, let's talk about a little more about conditional statements because we actually looked at the switch statement. If you notice with our switch statement that break statements weren't used at each, at the end of each case. So that's the only way we can actually break out of those particular case statements is by ending the lines of code that we want executed with that case with a break statement. 
The break statement tells the conditional statement or loop to cancel the rest of its operation and drop out of the switch statement. So it's important to remember when we use switch statements. And again, we'll have a full tutorial just on those switch statements. Unlike the if statement, which executes code in a block enclosed with curly braces, when working with switch statements, you must include break statements after each case to prevent the code from continuing to the next case, case statement. So in other words, when we were demonstrating a case state, those switch statements, if I were to remove one of the break statements from inside the case, it would execute all the way down those cases until it found a break statement. So it's very important to remember to use that break statement and put it in. And again, like I said earlier, we're going to have a full tutorial just on how we use switch statements inside of our programming. Loop statements in ActionScript 3, there are three different types of loops, or actually a few different types of loop structures in ActionScript 3. Let's start with one of my favorites, and that's the for loop. If you've programmed with C, with Java, with JavaScript, PHP, or almost any other programming language, you're probably familiar with the structure of the for loop. All for loops start with the keyword for. Again, let's move into our development environment and we'll demonstrate some loops inside of ActionScript. All right, so we're back in our development environment. First thing I wanna do is let's go back into our actions panel on frame one and make certain that we've got it open for loops. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those remarks those comment marks before the go to and stop on the loops frame. Go ahead and save those changes. Now I'm going to go ahead and select our loops action frame on, re on frame 30, making sure I'm on the actions layer and just go ahead and open up the actions panel. And you notice in here I've got a couple of different loops. Let me make this a little larger. I've got two actual, two different loops inside this actions panel. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's go ahead and remove the comments from our first loop. And let's talk about what we're looking at here. So I'm looking at a for loop. The first thing you'll notice I'm doing is I'm declaring a variable i and I'm giving it a data type of number. So we've already talked about variables. You should be getting pretty familiar with those by now. And in my for loop, I'm actually telling my for loop for i is equal to zero. If i is less than 10, add one to i and then run this code. And I want you to, there's something that you really need to understand about loops in general. It only makes this evaluation the first time through the for loop. And it's pretty much true with a bunch of our different loops in programming, and you'll find that out and you'll see that as we work through the tutorials. But then it's gonna run through these iterations. It's gonna look at i and say, is it less than 10? If it's less than 10, it's gonna run the code that's in the curly braces, and then it's going to run this, which is gonna add one more to the value of i. When this finally evaluates false, in other words, when i is not less than 10, it's going to drop out of the curly braces and execute the code that's below the curly braces. So in this example, it should actually look at this and say, is i less than 10? Say, yes, it is. It's going to add one. Or I'm sorry. It's going to run through the code. Then it's going to add one to i, and then it's going to go reevaluate it again. Is i still less than 10? And so on and so forth. So in this particular example, when we run this code, and I'm going to do control enter in Windows, or command return on the Mac. And you'll notice here, it starts counting at zero. Remember, we assigned zero for the very first value, and that works all the way up to nine. And then it says, wait a minute now. So it's currently now at number 10. It says, okay, i is not less than 10. It drops out and it executes this. And that's why you're seeing at the very end where it says variable i is finally 10. And actually right here, it is 10. I could actually put an equal sign here. Let's go ahead and save that change. Because now I'm asking i for it to be either less than or equal to 10. So now when I execute the code, it actually should count all the way to 10 instead of stopping at 9, because now it can actually equal 10 also. So again, Control Enter in Windows, Command Return on the Mac to execute the code. And you'll notice there, now we actually go to the number 10. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change this back. Let's take out that equal sign. Let's save the change. I got another demonstration of loops in here. Let's go ahead and comment this out. Because if you look right below it, I'm doing another demonstration of the equal sign or the loops. And this time I'm assigning a value of 100 to i. And then I'm asking the variable, is i greater than 50? So when we first come into this loop, we're actually setting i to 100. So we know i is greater than 50. So then it's going to run this code and then it's going to take one away from i. Instead of adding one to it, this time we're taking one away from it. And that's why I've got down here, the countdown begins. And it's going to execute this code every time that i is greater than the number 50. And finally, when i gets down to 50, it's going to drop out and say the countdown ends. So when we execute the code, again, Control-Enter in Windows, Command-Return on the Mac, 
you'll see now if I scroll up, we started at 100, and every time it ran through there, it actually put the number in plus the countdown begins because we had two lines of code inside our curly braces. And then it gets all the way down to the end. When it gets down to 51, it says I is no longer greater than 50 because now I is 50. I actually equals 50. It drops out and say the countdown ends. Because when I is, was 50, actually the countdown did end. Let's go ahead and comment these back out. Again, if you have access to the exercise files, you'll have a copy of all this stuff inside your exercise folders. I hope that gives you an idea how loops work. Again, we're going to have plenty of tutorials on these loops as we go through these tutorials. I just wanted you to understand basic concepts on how loops work inside of ActionScript. All right, so real quick, we've looked at the for loop in ActionScript, loop statements in ActionScript 3. We have loops are very important aspect in programming code. We'll cover much more about loops as we work through the tutorials. Again, I just want everybody to get kind of on the same page so that when I'm talking about variables, when I'm talking about functions, when I'm talking about conditional statements, when I'm talking about loops, you have an idea of what I mean. You're going to learn much more about all this stuff as we go through the tutorials. The for loop is just one example of the loops we will study as we move forward in our exercises. We have the for loop, we have the while loop, we have the do while loop. There's a, a couple of different loops that we use quite frequently. The for loop is the most popular, and that's why that's the one I wanted to demonstrate because it is the one that's used most often. One other thing I want to talk about before we wrap this up is classes in ActionScript 3. A class is a blueprint for an object. And I again, I don't expect you to understand everything I'm talking about here. I just want you to understand when you hear the term classes, we're talking about objects inside of our programming language. And there's a lot of programming languages now that are beginning to use classes in object-oriented programming. And you're going to see that as we work through ActionScript 3. You write classes before you run your program, and when your program's running, they are set in stone. In other words, we can't actually change the class when the program's running. We can do things with it. We can add things to it. We can pull things out of it. One exception to this is dynamic classes, which we'll talk about in future tutorials. Otherwise, the only thing that a running program uses class of force to create or orchestrated production of objects inside of our program and to manipulate types of objects inside of our program. Classes contain the code you write when your program runs. It's an orchestrated production of objects, and that production is directed by the code inside the classes that we wrote. And again, we're going to go all through this. Classes are the foundation of object-oriented programming, or OOP. If you're new to programming, you may not have ever heard that before, but it's relatively new. It's been around for probably five or six years. Object-oriented programming is where everything now is moving to because it makes programming, once you understand how it works, it makes it so much simpler to program if you understand how objects work and how you can actually in interface with those objects in your programming code. I understand you probably don't know what classes are yet, but as we work through the tutorial series, you're going to hear me refer to them, and I wanted you to be familiar with the term. You're actually going to be using them inside of our tutorials and as we get into the programming tutorials. So I wanted you familiar with what the term classes means in a programming language. By the time you complete the training, you'll have a very good grasp of what a class is and how you can create your own classes using ActionScript 3 and actually manipulate your programs using those classes. With that, let's go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was mostly presentations. That's not normally the case. We are going to get into a lot more stuff as we move through these tutorials. Most of the presentations are going to be very, very short, and then we're going to have a lot of demonstrations and a lot of exercises. This was the exception of the rule because we're actually setting up the course, what we plan to cover, and how we plan to cover it. So I look forward to seeing you. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified of tutorials as they're posted. And don't forget to check out our website, www.ontargethtml5.com for a complete listing of all the tutorials that are available for viewing. There's many more than we have don't have posted up on YouTube. I look forward to your feedback and thank you for visiting the OnTargetHTML5 YouTube channel.